Hey, what's going on, Guardians? My name is The Black Link, and today is October 1st, 2020, the first day of a spooky new month. And you all know what that means. It's Thursday, so it's time for another issue of the Bungie Weekly Blog, This Week at Bungie. And this time around, we are all about the incoming October spook event, Festival of the Lost. If you weren't around earlier today, we actually got a trailer and a website for Festival of the Lost live that showed off a lot of the new masks and armors and emotes and stuff that are going to be provided in the event and gave us a lot of information about what we'll be doing this time around. And because that trailer dropped earlier on a Thursday, I figured it's Thursday, we're going to be getting a TWAB video anyways, I'll just wait until the TWAB drops and then we'll make a big video covering everything that we learned from the trailer as well as from the TWAB. Plus, I was busy doing other things. So anyways, let's go ahead and talk a bit about Festival of the Lost. It's basically going to be very similar to the Festival of the Lost event last year, in that it's also going to be reutilizing the Haunted Forest replayable activity. Now, for those of you Guardians out there who maybe didn't partake in previous Festivals of the Lost, the Haunted Forest is going to be an activity that you'll be able to queue from from the tower that basically takes you through a dark, spooky version of the Infinite Forest from Mercury. In there... You're tasked with clearing branches of the forest and basically making it as far inside as you can while taking out bosses along the way. The further in you make it and the more bosses you defeat, the better your rewards at the end. And this time around, there's actually going to be some serious rewards for players who choose to spend their time within the Haunted Forest. Now, additionally, there's also a different mechanic in the Haunted Forest that makes it a bit different from every other activity in the game. There are specialized masks that you'll be able to collect over the course of the event, including masks from previous year's Festival of the Lost and some new masks that we'll have access to next week. When you wear these masks, they have their own specific perks and mods that you can put on them that make you way more powerful in the Haunted Forest. Stuff that can make you virtually unkillable so long as you're in the air, uh, stuff that allows you to absorb HP from your enemies or get your super and heavy ammo and all kinds of that kind of stuff back by just defeating foes. The masks themselves are very powerful and they make playing through the Haunted Forest really, really fun. But that's the general gist of it. You load up the activity, you push your way through, you take out bosses, and you get a chest at the end. What's going to be different this time around is the number of rewards you get at the end of the activity. In order to open the chests in this year's festival, you're going to need what's called Cypher Decoders. When the event begins on October 6th, talk to the spider over on the Tangled Shore to get started, and then these Cypher Decoders will start to drop from any of your favorite activities across the solar system, similar to the way that Umbral Engrams currently drop. And it's these Cypher Decoders that will allow you to open the chest at the end of your Haunted Forest run. By the way, they've added five chests to the end of the activity for five times the loot that we would normally be getting. Meaning that playing through the Haunted Forces time around should be way more lucrative than it's ever been before. And in particular, these chests have a chance of dropping newly rolled versions of the Braytech Werewolf and Horror Story Legendary Auto Rifle. These, of course, being the signature event weapons from previous year's Festival of the Lost. This is pretty cool because these two auto rifles were always statistically good, but their perk combinations were awful. So I'm super happy that these are going to be added back into the loot pool here. You're going to be able to farm this activity with your cipher decoders to open these chests and get random rolled versions of these guns and potentially get some much, much, much better rolls than what was offered in previous years. Now, as for the masks that you'll be donning in there, of course, like last year, you're going to have a new Masquerader helmet that you can apply all of the masks to. They're all basically ornaments now rather than being separate helmets like they used to be way back in the day. But these aren't the only rewards you'll be shooting for over the course of the Festival of the Lost event. The TWAB goes on to state that before we wrap up the event on November 3rd, you're going to want to complete three of the triumphs tied to it for opening chests in the Haunted Forest. Once you finish off the required triumphs, you will be able to trade in some of your candy for a mummified exotic sparrow, ship, and ghost. And of course, we got to see some great screenshots of all of those new rewards right here. We also got to see some great screenshots of the new masks and the forest itself. This reminds me, I almost completely forgot about the entire concept of candy. Candy is kind of going to be, if it works like previous festivals of the Lost, a currency that you'll build up by completing bounties and taking out enemies both in the haunted forest and outside of it. And then you utilize that candy as a currency 
that allowed you to buy mystery grab bags from Ava Levante, which could contain new mask ornaments, uh, the Braytech Winter Wolf when that became available in previous years, and of course all kinds of other things like armor and whatnot. Anyways, the rewards don't stop there. Finishing the Wrapped and Ready Triumph required to get the Exotic Ghost also unlocks the ability to purchase the Restless Shell Ghost Pen through Bungie Rewards. And speaking of Bungie Rewards, they also have a terrifying new emblem available for free if you finish the initial quest during Festival of the Lost. And just like in previous festivals, this new emblem looks cool. And is no doubt going to be popping up all across your Guardian friend list as the event goes on starting on October 6th. But that's the general gist of Festival of the Lost. When the event goes live next week on Reset, head over to the Spider, get that quest started. You'll start to earn those uh, those cipher decoders from activities that you're completing. And then you can start making your runs through the Haunted Forest with your mask on, getting through those branches, defeating the bosses, and then opening the chest at the end for your rewards. But with that being said, there are a few things that you should know before the event begins. Here's some quick notes. The minimum power level required to enter the Haunted Forest is still 750 light, meaning everybody should basically be able to get in there. You can hold up to 25 cipher decoders before you need to go open some chests in the Haunted Forest. There will be both earnable masks and masks available for silver and bright dust in the Eververse store. And any triumphs involving masks will not require masks from Eververse. So there's going to be some triumphs that require you to do stuff with masks or earn certain masks. The masks that are in those triumphs are not the ones from Eververse. So there's no, uh, there's no price gate there. Bounties will return from last year and will once again offer you Bright Dust as well. All new Eververse items will be available for both Silver and Bright Dust, except for the 1-inch Punch Finisher, which will be available for Silver. And finally, the toothbrush is apparently still just a toothbrush. But if you think that's going to get me to dismantle it, Bungie, well, you're wrong. But there we go, Guardians. It's everything you need to know about the incoming Halloween event, Festival of the Lost, again, starting next week on Reset, October 6th at 10 a.m. Pacific Time. It's always a pretty fun event, and running through the Haunted Forest is always a good time, so I can't wait to dive in there. Now, the other big thing to talk about this week is that Bungie's running another major charity event. The Bungie Foundation is once again supporting the relief efforts of Direct Relief to provide N95 masks, medicine, and other resources to healthcare agencies and first responders in wildfire-affected communities across California, Oregon, and Washington. And of course, along with this, that means they've got a new ghost pin to sell. All profits from the sale of the empathetic ghost shell pin from October 1st until October 15th will benefit direct release wildfire relief efforts. And if you purchase an empathetic ghost shell pin, you will instantly receive a code for the Benevolent Hue emblem as a thank you for your support. By now, you Guardians know how well this community crushes it whenever it comes to big issues like this. So if you're interested in getting that ghost pin or that specific emblem in-game, head to the Bungie store and place your order. But alright, moving beyond that, the last thing we have to talk about is of course the news that next week is going to be another double reward week for Nightfall the Ordeal. So if you're looking to stockpile some enhancement prisms or ascendant shards for your masterworking needs the moment Beyond Light comes out, Next week is going to be another great week to do it, although I don't know exactly what the Nightfall itself is going to be, and it's probably not going to be as fast as Lake of Shadows. But if you want those double rewards, make sure you're running that ordeal next week. But alright, Guardians, that's pretty much it for all the big bits of news that dropped today. Again, I'm super excited about the return of Festival of the Lost. I think this is a great way to give players a little bit of something to do while we wait that last long agonizing month before Beyond Light comes out. November 10th, you cannot come fast enough. But anyways, those are my thoughts. Be sure to leave me yours down in the comment section below. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to drop a like, make sure you subscribe, and hit that notification bell to stay up to date with all the latest stuff we're putting out. But I'm out for now. Thank you all so much for watching. And as always, I am the Black Link. You guardians, stay frosty.